Hi, it's Coach Rory coming to you live from Espana. Well, not live by the time you see this, but you get the idea. I'm here enjoying some R&R &R after competing in the Global Energy 10K race. I was invited to take part in this year's international event after winning one of their races in the U.S. last year. I didn't run as well as I would have liked, but I had a blast competing with some talented athletes from over 21 different countries. Anyway, enough about me. I hope you've been keeping up with our weekly videos because we have no plans of stopping, even when I'm recording from a noisy Spanish plaza. Last week, we offered three cues to help you maintain proper form when running slow. Today we have a short tutorial that will help you get the most accurate reading from the wrist-based heart rate monitor on your Garmin, Sunto, or other GPS device. If you're like me, you probably remember wearing those restrictive, chafe-inducing chest wraps. While some runners still opt for these, the wrist-based heart rate monitors have dominated the market since then. Most of these have optical sensors which rely on something called photoplethysmography. 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 For both of our sakes, I'm going to call it PPG. This is basically the measurement of artery volume using light. The short version is that the sensor on the underside of your watch shines light into your wrist using LEDs and then measures the light that is scattered by the blood flow, which varies with the pulse rate or changes in blood volume, also known as cardiac output. As you have likely discovered by now, wrist heart rate measurement should be considered an estimate. In fact, depending on the type of exercise and devices you're using, recent studies reveal the rate of error may be as small as 2% to as high as 30%. For the most accurate readings, it looks like the chest strap reigns supreme, as well as taking your pulse the good old-fashioned way. However, for those who prefer the convenience of the wrist optical sensors, here are some tips to help get the most accurate heart rate readings possible. This is possibly the top factor that affects the accuracy of your readings. You can start with these suggestions and then tweak and test the fit of your watch on your own until you find your personal sweet spot. Wear your watch at one finger above your wrist bone and make sure the watch is snug on your wrist. Your watch should always maintain contact with your skin so that you can't see the light shining from the sensor. Wearing the watch extremely tight can cut off blood flow and reduces the sensor's ability to monitor the heart rate. The key during exercise is to wear the watch as high up on your wrist as possible and to prevent it from sliding down during exercise. A good test is to wear it about two fingers above your wrist bone. This ensures it still will give an accurate reading if it slides down a bit on the run. Again, make sure you wear the watch tight and evenly against the skin, yet not too tight to cut off blood circulation. It's harder for the optical sensor to pick up on differences in reflected light if your watch is grimy from all the hard work you've been putting in. Remove your watch frequently so that you can wash it and the strap with soap and water. Rinse thoroughly and dry it off with a towel before putting it back on. Try to clean your watch after every heavy workout. Also, be aware that the buildup of lotions and oils such as sunscreen, insect repellent, and moisturizers that can be trapped beneath the strap or on your skin inhibit accurate readings as well. Here's a pro tip. Wearing your watch long term on the same wrist may irritate your skin. Give your skin a rest on a regular basis by taking your watch off or switching the watch to the other wrist. The quality of the wrist-based heart rate measurement heavily depends on the blood flow to your arms and hands. A proper warm-up of 10-15 to 15 minutes increases the blood flow and improves the quality of the readings. So if you see an especially low heart rate or sudden spike in the early miles of a run, don't be too concerned. If you take your watch off during the day, put it on before starting your workout. It usually needs at least a few minutes to lock onto your heart rate. We recommend opening the exercise start screen while you're changing your clothes to get ready for your workout. If your watch loses your heart rate during exercise, pause the activity for a moment. Usually about 10 to 30 seconds will do it. Then hit start again once your watch is locked onto your heart rate. If all else fails, I do a soft reset by powering my watch on and off again. Besides keeping up with the most current software update, note the other factors that contribute to wacky heart rate readings. 
When exercising in cool or cold temperatures, your body attempts to keep your temperature stable by directing the blood flow from the arms and legs towards the core of your body. This reduction in blood flow to the arms can make it more difficult for the sensor to measure heart rate accurately. If you frequently have cold hands, try to warm them up before exercising as this can throw off your heart rate reading. Don't compare the number between different forms of exercise, arm movements, and flexing muscles such as gripping a tennis racket or doing CrossFit style high intensity training, and finally, sports involving strong vibrations like cycling on uneven, bumpy terrain can change the accuracy of the sensor readings. Unfortunately, when swimming, your readings are most prone to error since water passing underneath the watch affects the optical sensor's ability to read heart rate accurately. Finally, dark tattoos can throw the optical sensor on your watch for a loop. You probably already knew that your watch's heart rate monitor wasn't 100% accurate, but we hope these tips can help you have just a little bit more faith in its readings. Remember that if your device isn't accurate, it may still be reliable. That is, while your watch may be 5 beats per minute off or so during any given reading, if it is always 5 off, you should take note when your heart rate is 15 beats higher than it normally is during activity. This could be a sign that you're overexerting yourself or that your body is more fatigued than usual. Were these tips helpful? Do you trust the wrist-based optical sensor, or do you wear a chest strap instead? Do you have any secrets or hacks to help you get a more accurate heart rate reading? Drop us a comment below, and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And have a great run today, folks.